Hey everybody, welcome back to another One Credit Play, and welcome to the new recording space. Same room as before, just updated. This is the first One Credit Play in the new studio, and I'm very, very pleased with how things are turning out here. Today, we're going to be playing Michael Andretti's World GP on the NES. It's the game I got to replace Super Scope 6 in my February box, because I already had that game. Again, uh, Video Games Monthly, I reached right out to them, they checked their timestamps, they realized it was already on my list of games I already owned, and they took quick care of it. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'll be capturing this for my retro USB AVS system. And here it is. Uh, Another racing game. Uh, we had last month, we had Rad Racer 2, which was pretty awesome. So, I don't know, we should do, let's do practice mode. So you can pick your course in this one, which is pretty cool. Unlike the other game. We got France, we got England. England looks pretty easy. So what do we got? We got four cars to choose from. Got the Chevy Lola, the V8 Turbo, 630 horsepower, four speed. Honda V10, non turbo, 622 horsepower automatic. The Ferrari V12, non turbo, 617 horsepower, four speed. And the Medium V8, non turbo, 605 horsepower, four speed. So I'm assuming we actually have to shift gears in these two. I don't want to get into that. We'll, let's go with the Chevy. Go with the Chevy. And I guess that's okay. This layout is very simple. Watch out for the sharp curves. All right, that's a great pixel image. On your mark, go. I guess I'm shifting gears anyways. This is fun. Actually not doing too terribly bad. Oh, oh. I stand corrected. Who needs brakes? I think the turning's a little janky in this. I'm finding that you have to, uh, you, you don't get like a smooth turning transition. There's different points it, it immediately goes to. What the hell is going on? I'm assuming that that T at the bottom, is that our fuel or is that, is it? Oh, I think I know what it is. Oh my gosh. Oh, these cars. This is some of the jankiest driving. Here comes that weird snake turn. Oh. Oh, it is tires. Okay, as I spin out, I see the gauge going down. Whew! That's rough. My pit crew's like, what are you doing to our car? Oh, that holds your speed. So if you hold B, it stops your speed in place. All right, don't use the B button when you're uh, slowing down. Lesson learned. There's a way to use that effectively. I don't know what it is. Oh my gosh. Realistic spin out physics. It's a thing. Oh, 
Oh my gosh, I'm so bad at this. I mean, we kind of got better. I'm curious though, like why? All right, let's see here. Is it, wait, that says, that does say four speed. I swear that said it was automatic. Let's try it with an automatic car. Less to think about. Definitely a lot less to think about. All right, so B does work as a brake button. I just, I think at this point in game development, there was really no place for manual transmissions. Shoulder buttons made that easier in later games, I think. I mean, I still suck. Well, there we have it. So, my thoughts. That's a terrible sound. Whew, that was rough. Um, it's not a bad game. The turning mechanic is weird because you don't have a smooth, like, transition and then it returns. It stays where you turn it as you tap the turning button. So... It's more of a more of a strategy thinking type of a thing than uh, other racing games I've played. So, eh, that's what it is. It's not a bad game. It's not a bad game. I'd definitely give it another shot. Well, thank you guys for watching my video. That's it for me today. Don't forget you can catch me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash retrosetjoe. Don't forget to check me out in the social media links in the video description. And as always, happy gaming. Until next time, bye-bye.